Holler if you hear me, and welcome to this edition of Luke's Sketches, where I decided to actually be on camera this time because this is going to be a different version of what you usually get. This is a special edition all because of really big but sad news that came up over the weekend, pretty much Saturday afternoon. Most of, I would say, my audience out there is at least tangentially familiar with the Power Rangers franchise, probably from the very beginning, from the whole Mighty Morphin when it started, and then from those first three years, it went on to then changing the power and subtitle from year after year. Well, the real breakout character from the show when it originally began, the, the Green Ranger, or if you remember the actual character names of the Rangers, Tommy Oliver. Yes, his uh, actor, Jason David Frank, the most prolific actor associated with the Power Rangers franchise. He was the guy who was, he became pretty much the lead of the show when they added him as the Green Ranger into the cast in the middle of the first year. Then they kept him on. Then the second year, they really made him the leader of the group. And then on there to then the next year of Mighty Morphin. And then he stayed on as the lead from throughout the first year where they changed the power set to Zeo. And then most of Turbo, like the first half or so of Turbo, then that's when most of the cast that had been there walked out. And since then, he would come back as a sort of mentor figure or they'd have him go on as a full ranger in later seasons to the point where he could go and morph into every different version of a ranger that he'd played. Well, very sadly, very unexpectedly, he was found dead at 49 over a, uh, a suicide. And really, when people say about, you no, know, someone, this was a shock or this was unexpected about a certain celebrity, you know, ending themselves... In this case, it really was because anybody who ever saw him at convention appearances he would make or it seemed in interviews or behind the scenes footage involving the franchise, whether it was the when the show was originally on or like the very first thing I remember, some VHS I had included a little like preview for the little behind the scenes preview for the Power Rangers movie, the first one. And you saw the Rangers on camera talking and definitely I would say if I was going to if you're going to have of those original actors of course, the original Yellow Ranger sadly died in a car wreck about a week before 9-11. I remember hearing about that. But if you take the rest of them and, okay, which one is most likely going to go and wind up taking their own life, Nim most definitely would have been the last one to think because he was always the most energetic and enthusiastic. There was even, I remember seeing somewhere on YouTube, some like behind the scenes footage. And this wasn't professionally shot. This was some behind the scenes footage where somebody just had a camcorder to set. And there he'd be on the set. You could tell it was the first year of the show because he was still the Green Ranger in his green outfit and all that. And there was like, it was just a random mix of footage of him on a classroom set for Mighty Morphin, then him in some location somewhere. And then they were doing like some big public live show appearance and they're all doing their, their, it's during rehearsal. So they're in costumes with their helmets off and everybody's, you know, introducing themselves and doing like a little bit of the, you know, jazz hands jazz hands foo that they're supposed to do but then he comes in it's his turn to introduce himself and he's doing black backflips clear across the floor and doing high kicks one and two and three and that kind of exuberance that kind of energy that kind of enthusiasm and also when you'd see him at convention appearances that kind of real energy towards really interacting with the fans and always being ready to talk to anybody and sign anything and take a picture with anybody and always really give them the time of day you know, making his career and all that, definitely the last one I would expect to have any kind of whatever personal demons or something that would lead to anybody committing suicide like that. And this is truly something where I, I, when people say they're at a loss for lur words, you know, hell, even I'm at something at a loss for words because I'm saying lurids, not words. It's truly an example of, oh, okay, I was, what, well, what do you do? What do you say? And this is just somebody... You know, there are a lot of there are people out there who, when it comes to a, being a fandom of something, if someone in that group, they're really it, and they go and you know they die young. Like we've, this has been really terrible now because I saw in this afternoon the the original stuntman for uh, the Michael Myers in the first Halloween movie. He also died. We, he was eighty five, and it happened like as he was about to make a convention appearance, I think, in the UK. And kind of now with Kevin Conroy's passing the week before and what we saw where he had been sick for, I think, a while. And then just suddenly he had a uh, appearance he was supposed to make and then canceled. And then he had, it turns out, oh, yes, that he, he lost his battle. And this has just been God awful time for it. It seems the, the 
two out of three at least being real main actors from very prominent and pop culture staples of the late 90s that millennials really were that was their first exposure that's what they grew up on that's what they knew and they loved and there were those who were big fans of that franchise of you know the animated series of power rangers in the 90s and they had the toys and they had everything involved in it and then eventually they may have grown out of it. And yeah, they, they you know eventually like either kept all the old toys or had them all sold off or whatever. And then there are those to whom the, the really devastated ones are the ones where they are at the very least, they didn't like grow out of it, but it's still something they really fondly remember. And that's something where, it, I mean, it still stays with you, even if you're not really rapidly still collecting merchandise or things like that. And there's those, but then truly the ones where almost as much as if somebody who knew them personally, you know, someone that was friends or family or a long-term co-star, this is something where we really, the, the real lifelong fans who, you know, would get all the merchandise, who was be enthusiastic about each new version of the show, who would go to conventions to see, you know, whatever actor in the franchise was involved. But he was one of those, Jason David Frank was one of those because he was really the breakout star of the show's initial run. When it comes to having either a like Rangers major convention, like of course the Power Morphicon they have in Anaheim every year, or if it's just if it's a major convention that would get Power Rangers actors involved, if he was there, that was uh, th- that was a major deal. Like with with Kevin Conroy appearing at a show that at a Comic Con somewhere, because yeah, getting the you know the major actors who've played the part. Yeah, you're probably not going to get a Michael Keaton to show up there or even a Christian Bale to show up there. But Kevin Conroy, there's the one where you've got a, you know, a major name associated with the Batman character where he shows up. There's definitely going to be a massive flock of attendants to come to see him. Same thing with the Power Rangers fans. If, say, there was a convention where you had like a you know, certain day, like certain strategically planned conventions where they would have certain celebrity guests that would be there for a day of the show... Then you because they know that that performer is going to have that kind of fan base that's going to bring the real fans out there rapidly to come and wait around the block, even if it's in a show in the blistering cold. They want to see that man because that was the performer who really stood out. That was the one who brought us to the show or caught our eye and then kept us into the show, like with Frank's case, where he was not the initial, not supposed to be the initial lead of Power Rangers, but just came in like a whirling dervish, like a force of nature and brought, caught all our eyes and then kept us hooked and kept us enthused. And I remember personally, I kept with the Power Rangers franchise up until I think I remember it was Time Force. That was the one where then I remember in the middle of that, I just stopped watching. And well, I'm, and I can imagine if going up and asking, and I want to see, comment below, when if you kept on watching the Power Rangers franchise after the after the you know, Tommy Oliver and the original Rangers or the ongoing Rangers cast around him quit because you really have the, the when it comes to the criticisms the show had of oh that they were all you know boring or they were all one note or whatever well uh, at least some people who are a little more have a little stronger memories of it or watched it more would look at that at the original Power Rangers like oh yes but you can see that you know like the the one note personality or whatever but then. You know, there was the leader that, well, first he was green, then he became white. He was, you could tell why he wound up becoming the man in charge, because he was the one that really stood out the most, with the most exuberance, with the most charisma. And then you look at that and you think, that's that's why, it makes it all the more horrifying to see just, it's, at, it, it would leave you at a loss for words, out of what, how, no. It's the, it, with everything that somebody if a rabid fan base would then go in any kind of pop culture staple and they wind up offing themselves like this, either that or if it was something where like with Kevin Conroy and his cancer, just sitting there, just at a, 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 it's, it's when it's not really something that you're just saying figuratively when people talk about, you know, the, the world is a sadder place because there were an awful lot of people out there for decades, for decades and even across multiple generations, even who, there was the, the generation that really were there when Batman's animated series started or when Power Rangers started. You know, there were those who first came in and really made the Power Rangers a household name. And yeah, you could make the argument that 
Power Rangers still would have been a huge phenomenon, even if they didn't have the Green Ranger involved. It would have been cool, but what if it had been the same kind of massively popular fad that had a multi-year run, which then inevitably now in the present day leads to being a big pop culture staple for a sustained period that eventually, yes, it uh, you know did not become as big a thing as it was. Same thing with Ninja Turtles but definitely was something that was eventually going to become something that then would become a new major pop culture staple revived for a new generation built on the back of the previous generation who now, you know, they have kids or maybe we can now get to them to come back now that they're older. And with Power Rangers, that was definitely something of the case. And it was damn fitting that of all the OG Rangers actors, they brought Tommy back and, When I said about how him being the one with the most personality, they really built it up because if you remember, he was a villain. And then the other ranger incarnations afterwards where they made him more like a kind of Zordon, like mentor figure, but, you know, somebody could actually walk and talk instead of having the mouth move out of sync with the the voice actor with the head in the tube. And playing it up really well with that whole multi-part story of him going through the existential crisis where he's stuck and literally has to fight his way through every past version of himself with the big one being, you know, all his inner evil being made in the form of having to fight the original Green Ranger and conquering all of them to get himself out of that nightmare state. And then getting rewarded, first getting rewarded with getting the comeback of uh, you know being back on the show, but then later on with him being the, the multi-morpher where he could go and depending on what moment he can go and fight as his Zeo Ranger 5 Red or as the Turbo Red or the White Ranger, the Green Ranger or others and so on and so on and so on. Because you've got the one where uh, of the actors, there's always in, in any production there's the actor who, when they come on screen, you know, the, the reason they the reason they ought to be the lead is they come on and your eye gets drawn to them. And in the context of Power Rangers, that's when Jason David Frank would come on the screen and immediately everyone's going to him. Everyone's going to see there's the guy. And there's the one in charge with the original Ranger year, years. And then here's the, the big one who's now coming back with... Pre, uh, you know, subsequent incarnations, where then they even brought other past actors back too. I mean, that, th- those are always great. Like any of them, they have a real strong fan base, a real strong place in the fan base's heart. And still, when you bring them back, it's still them, you know, flanking Tommy Oliver, them flanking Jason David Frank being back to return. And something else about the, the Power Rangers franchise, at least in the initial years, I'm not as familiar with more recent versions of the show, but initially they did go out of their way to get those who, even though the show was built on action scenes that were stock footage, they did have you know, actors that did have some kind of background with gymnastics or martial arts or something like that. And Frank, with his multiple advanced black belts and different forms of martial arts, was really, you can tell, that's why they didn't always have to just cut the stock footage for fight scenes. And they can even do fight scenes where you can clearly see it's him out of costume because, yeah, he could... He, he could, out, you know, high kick and spin kick like he's damn Van Damme or like he's Ken in Street Fighter, able to helicopter kick his way up through the air with not, and some, he don't need no stick in Hadouken. And th- these are all just the things where really when it comes to being at a loss for words, it's more like I'm just trying to build up the explanations of what made him so important, what made him so great, what made him stand out so much among the Rangers actors and why. Uh, even though, yes, there, uh, I wouldn't say that there are that there are members of the Power Rangers cast of the Rangers actors who are really hated in any way. Uh, I mean, we, they're they're all beloved, but there's still going to be the the Shangri La of you know Tommy the Green or the White or the Red or the other kind of Red and the other versions so far, which, like I've said, I'm not as familiar with because. Uh, I told you even then there was a part where even I was not as rapidly following it. But now this is a case where it is truly something where I'm trying to just, you know, oh, this is a a massive shock to the system. Figuratively, this is a brick through the window. This is, oh, Lord. It's not really a matter of how did this happen. It's a matter of why. Now it's got me thinking of everything I thought I knew about this beloved guy and not thinking, well, then, what was going on that would lead to him doing something like this? This is something where, especially, I'm just going as somebody as a fan who would just see him on video, see him on camera. Then I would like for those who actually did ever meet him at conventions, who did ever go and, you know, speak to him in a more personal manner at a convention appearance or, you know, peep, if, if there's anybody who worked on the cast and crew or any production he was involved in, I, I'd like to know 
now what your personal understanding of him was and and we could all just try and do something to really figure out how did this happen or no 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 why did this happen what when it makes me want to know why what was going on that would make him do something like this this uh, th- there are other performers out there in some business or other where you you could tell eventually that they they were of the kind of personality where they would go and do something like this to themselves like Kurt Cobain really that was something where I'm not really surprised but you know Mr. Charisma Mr. Energy Mr. Exuberance like Jason David Frank that's one where it really is an example of it's not just me figuratively speaking because somebody who was a very popular actor on a show about the world is a sadder place, but also because he was so charismatic and so energetic that now you're truly somebody like that where if you you know saw something he was in or you saw him at a convention, truly somebody who was very high energy the way he uh, you know, presented himself and enthusiastic and energetic, you know, the, the, the line from the movie of, you know, with the great power, all things are possible. Well, now, the guy behind that, the guy that made you believe a line like that is now gone. So that's something where it's just a matter of it really is like all the power is out in the house. All the lights, all the candles have been, you know, burned out. And it's a good Lord. What? How? Why? What? I'm, I said I'm at a loss for words, so I'm just tossing the questions out there trying to figure it out how. And that's something where, gee, good, good Lord, what? what's... I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to leave it at this because I think I've said my piece and I'd like to know what your piece, what you have to say about him is because I know I've got a lot of Rangers fans out there who would have their own two cents to say. And I mean, that, that's what the comment section is for. But I, and I really do want you all to comment below to see you know what it is you thought of the man or what it is now, you know, what, what your opinion is on one thing or the other related to this topic. And if... Of course, as usual, if you go on and like and subscribe if you're new and to the returning viewers, always check that you still are subscribed. And to new and returning, don't forget the best way to support the work is to shop on my Square store. That's the first link in the description below where my uh, pen and ink illustrations are 25, my color drawings are 30, and my uh, sketchbooks are now 25. You can also go and get your, uh, you can also commission me for a color piece, a color drawing for 60, a pen and ink piece for 50, or a trading card for 20. And those are available as the last items in my color drawings categories, my illustrations categories, or in my coffee sleeves super babes category. Or you can simply donate any dollar amount you'd like. Uh, do- donations are the first thing you see in the store and they can come in any dollar amount from any denomination around the world. And whatever you get in the store, one thing, several things, whatever, only comes with a flat $5 shipping and handling fee. And if you live outside of the USA and you'd like to buy my work, do not forget that there's also that you'd have to make your payment as a donation. Add up the prices of what you want to buy or to commission and include 25 US for the international shipping and handling fee and your items will ship. Or also, don't forget, uh, also I have a, a Streamlabs uh, tip set, t- little a tip link set up. That's also going to be added into the description below. Or yes, uh, if you if you feel like a donation, but yeah, don't want to go to the store. Well, there's the Streamlabs there as an alternate option. All right. Well, so then until uh, then, let's just uh, hope whatever was going on in the man's life or in his head that led him doing this. Let's that's especially uh, the hope that he rests in peace. And uh, that's all I've got to say.